Hello everyone, my name is Joanna. Today our guest is Ms. Takako Takano, an adventurer, environmental educator, also a president of non-profit organization EcoPlus. Thank you for coming in here today. Thank you for having me here. So you have visited many places all over the world, uh, like Micronesian Islands, uh, Arctic Circle, Greenland, and so on and so on. So uh, could you please tell us about your first adventure when you were a student? Right. Um, uh, when I was in a, actually a graduate school student, mm -hmm. I went to Australia. I was a, a British-based program called Operation Rally. Um, I was part of the, a team of about 100 people mm -hmm. from different countries. And they are all about the same age, between 18 and 24, 5. And the an idea was to live in the wilderness in different cultures mm -hmm. and then work on different projects for three months. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, there was no houses, uh, no roads, nothing, nothing built. Mm -hmm. And you have to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though there was a, a large number, but we are divided into small groups, a group of like about 15 people work together. And then, um, uh, so I went to the northern part of Australia and I was kind of dropped off by a bus. Mm -hmm. This is the way you live uh, for the first month. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of a dry time. And it was kind of just willow trees and eucaly eucalyptus trees mm -hmm. and nothing else. And it was, okay, where do I live? <laughs> how? <laughs> that was how it started. Uh -huh. I was only Japanese and the rest are British, Americans, Australians. Um, yeah, I think our team was considered without those people. Mm -hmm. Um, but pretty diverse, even I said British, yes. there's some Scottish, uh, you know, English, and there are different backgrounds. And we, start to, uh, we started to build shelter first, a uh, tent, mm -hmm. uh, and then looked for water. And uh, we are getting kind of desperate, you know, because if you don't have water, you die. Yes. <laughs> Sounds scary. Yeah. And, you know, because there was a place that where. Uh, Irish immigrants had lived. Um, there was water source, and then we managed to get water, and our life really unfolded. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, yeah. yeah. So how did it happen? How did um, you end up in right, this project? Right. Okay. Okay. I, I saw an advertisement in newspaper, and then I, I thought it was very interesting uh, to live in nature with different culture, cultures, and different people. And so I, I looked for the information and I went through actually selections. Mm -hmm. And I think there are about uh, one out of 30 mm -hmm. got selected. Yes. And then uh, so it was pretty competitive. Um, and at that time, uh, what interested me most was to live as young people with different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like it, it did say, advertisement said that uh, you're, you're li you would live in nature. Mm -hmm. in the wilderness um, and you need physical strength mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You do adventure uh, activities and I read them but I didn't understand what it really means yeah. and I, I learned what it meant you know yes. <laughs> when I went there. You, you have to be tough. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's, of course you know there are people you know there are differences in physical strengths and then sometimes one gets sick and there are physical sort of uh, uh, work, yes. you know, carrying heavy things to you know cutting trees and all those really hard work as well. And then some couldn't cope. And then we all helped each other. And and then one time we we had rations. We had kind of food brought in, and uh, we we ran out. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time I was in a, a food. Um, a duty. I, I was to serve something to eat mm -hmm. and we had only one tin of beans mm -hmm. among 15 of us. I mean plus staff, so about 20 of us. 
I know what to do. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and I found half rotten cabbage uh -huh. and beans and cabbage. That's all we had. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody was so tired, exhausted because of those physical work. And we had water, fortunately, but uh, not much food. And I thought, what everybody would do with this? And we could serve only like one spoonful of beans mm -hmm. each. And, and the half rotten cabbages, I kind of, you know, saved as much as possible. And then we made a little bit of okonomiyaki type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, but not much. Yes. And I was watching how people do. And surprisingly, some real strong men didn't eat their share and they gave to a youngest girl who was a bit sick at that time. Mm -hmm. I was really touched. And then uh, humans, you know, like uh, if you're tired and then really close to the limit, you would think about yourself. That's what I thought. Yes. But these men um, acted differently. So that kind of built a bond even mm -hmm. stronger. That it was a hard, hard for us. We, we didn't have much to eat. I was looking at ants on the ground. The Aboriginal peoples ate them. Yes. <laughs> Shall we? Yes. <laughs> I was about to kind of harvest them, you know, yeah. but they're really, they bite you really hard. So ah. I was looking. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we managed that uh, hard time. And uh, I kind of started to trust people and also human nature, you know, mm -hmm. of course there are different people, yes. but um, we, we could do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a great experience yes. in, in many ways. So what was the most important thing you learned? Right, um, you know, first of all, we need nature to live. That is, the nature sustains our life. That's uh, the most probably important realization. Everybody thinks they knew, they know about this. this is, but actually, and I was one of them, you know, I, I knew this, I thought, but actually I didn't. I didn't understand fully what that means. Um, everything, like even canned soft drinks, that's, you know, if you, you know, trace it, that's water and from rain. I mean, rain, rainwater goes like this. And if rain is polluted, we're done. You know, that kind of thing we couldn't, I, I didn't really, make a connection before mm -hmm. but then through those experiences I, I firmly knew learned to understand that we completely depend on the sound nature and another important thing I learned was uh, uh, the peace is possible uh, just like the, the example I mentioned uh, even though we are all different people different way of doing things different way of thinking different religions different experiences but we can work together yes. and even though we make we don't agree with each other uh, and we make fights we don't you know like quarrels and things but still we can do things or we can live together that's something I think I would hope. So uh, one of your uh, next experience uh, was traveling across uh, Siberia, mm -hmm. right? And uh, also there you met indigenous people. Mm -hmm. So could you please tell us a little bit about this? How did it happen? How the contacts look like? Mm -hmm. The original plan for, for us was to go to Antarctica and walk to the South Pole. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are all waiting in Moscow for departure. Yes. But from various reasons, it didn't happen. And so we changed our plan uh, because we couldn't go to Antarctica anymore. And it was like uh, January uh, to, you know, it's the Antarctica summer is over. Yes. And then, but uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, the, it's getting towards spring. So we changed our direction to walk to Siberia and walk across the Bering Strait. Walk. Walk. Yes. <laughs> walk. And together with uh, American girl and Russian girls, we, as a team, we went to Siberia mm -hmm. and then tried to ski yes. and then go towards the Bering Strait. Mm -hmm. And then through those walking, and we, we had to go through villages, and then I, I met people mm -hmm. with um, parka, like fur parka and uh, different clothes. And, but very similar to Japanese looking. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time I had no idea who they are, yes. but they did look like, you know, Japanese or yes. Mongoloid. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, when I returned home, I, I, I let, read books and then gathered information. And then, and then they were, I learned they were Chukchi, they were Yupik, they were northern people uh, with same sort of blood origin as the other Asian people, like uh, we call Mongoloid, Asian Mongoloid. Were there any problems in communicating? Because, of course, you spoke different mm. languages, right? Definitely. Yes. yes. Um, not with language much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, as, as humans, we communicated with uh, body languages, drawings, or laugh, or giving something, or try to you know, communicate. That was, that was enough mm -hmm. to kind of um, uh, be happy with them. Yeah. And, and some invited us to their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, we ate together, and then I learned that they what they eat. It was uh, very different from like my diet mm -hmm. in Japan. Yes. Um, they are harvest in like um, hunters gatherers, so they they hunted seals and walruses, and, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes reindeer, and other wild things, yes. and then. Um, they cook differently, but for Japanese, it was um, as, as a Japanese, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> with a little bit of soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then some people spoke um, English, and then and then I, I spoke a little bit of Russian, mm -hmm. and then they had their different mother tongues, but some spoke Russian too, so we we did communicate in that way. So through the years you have been involved in many environmental education projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of them is uh, Yap Island mm -hmm. project. So could you please tell us a little bit about this? What is that exactly? Right. Yap Island yeah. is a small island mm -hmm. uh, in southwestern Pacific. It's a, a tropical island surrounded with coral reefs, lots of uh, palm trees, coconuts, and then. And a gorgeous island, but very small. And then people live there, still kind of um, value traditional way of life, which is a simple life in harmony with nature. And then uh, they have wonderful cultures and uh, developed over 2,000 years. And then a um, small island means uh, limited resource, yes. but they did survive. Thousands of years, um, their society um, is uh, has many rules to 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 live sustainab sustainably, and still people now it's kind of the cash is uh, getting major part of their life now, but still they can live uh, subsistence way of life. Like uh, they harvest fish and taro and fruits from their ground and. Um, and they still use rainwater or well water, and, and um, their life is still very in harmony with nature. Mm -hmm. And then that's where we can learn from. Yes. And I bring a group of young people, mm -hmm. uh, not only Japanese. There are different uh, nationalities, mm -hmm. but and they and then we live in a, one of the villages uh, close to uh, local stars. Yes. And then they they teach us how to live island skills how to weave mat. Uh, you need to weave mat because you that's where you sleep on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First thing we do. Yes. And you, you learn how to weave baskets. Mm -hmm. So if you go uh, go to gather something like uh, chestnuts or fruits, yes. all, all you have to have is just a piece of knife. Mm -hmm. That's all. Because the rest of the things you can make it by yourself. You, you go up, you go into the kind of woods, and then you harvest, you climb trees, mm -hmm. you kind of uh, catch those uh, coconut fronds, mm -hmm. and they weave, you weave the baskets as a, as a bag, mm -hmm. and you put things in it and just carry it back. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple. Yeah, so when the children mm -hmm. uh, come there, aren't they surprised, shocked, mm -hmm. or yeah, by the life yes. they have to lead? Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's so different. Yes. Um, they live without electricity, no gas, no faucet, and uh, of course no, you know, washing machine, or vending machine, or <laughs> nothing, right? So they're shocked um, for the first two, three days. Mm -hmm. 
uh, they don't function much. Well. <laughs> but uh, but they get hungry, uh -huh. you know, like because of those needs. You know, here in, in Japan, say um, your need is satisfied by others. Yes. You don't need to do much about it. Mm -hmm. If you're hungry, sometimes you, your mothers or you know people give you food, or you yes. just go to the convenience store and, and buy, buy them. them. Yes, <laughs> but there you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So you have to do something about it. Yeah. That means you have to gather food or cook cook something by giving food. But you need fire. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you need fuel. Next problem. Yes. <laughs> yes. So gradually, gradually, you know, first uh, two days, three days is hard, but um, you learn quickly because you need it, mm -hmm. and then um, that your life became very comfortable, and um, you become very so confident, mm -hmm. and satisfied, and then become very happy actually. Yeah. Because you're surrounded with beauty and abundant food and then people there are so nice mm. and so children uh, well children meaning <laughs> up to 25 six seven oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but sometimes you know, we have like from 12 years old too so uh, they they live to they learn to work together mm. in different ages mm -hmm. that's another factor and uh, they, they learn how, what sustains their life uh, you know it, it, it's very clear if um, the if they say drain too much detergent to river uh, sort of water source, mm -hmm. then you can drink them. Yeah. Uh, the fish would die with that. You know, they actually see these mm -hmm. things. So it's very clear. The link was very clear. Um, your environment needs to be clear and sound for you to live healthy. Yeah. What was the reason to start this project, and why um, why Yapa Island? Why Yapa Island, yeah. and then why? Um, it is because. Um, I learned similar things when I was in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we need some nature to live a healthy life. Um, I wanted to, I, I, I realized that because I was given that opportunity. So I thought it was my turn to provide that kind of uh, opportunity for the others. Yes. And then I, I also thought it was important that more people learn this important fact uh, in true, true way. To, to build society, like, you know, I, I will be the part of society, and then I, I I'd like the others to know this uh -huh. important thing. That's why I started it. Yes, yes. So do you have any plans or dreams for future? Plans and dreams for future. Yes. Mm, I, I'd like to continue uh, providing opportunities for people uh, to experience something new in terms of. Uh, experiences with nature because I think that's lacking uh, and then to learn where food are from that food we eat yes. and to meet with different cultures um, to act, to learn to accept diversities both in nature and cultures and um, I, I'd like to kind of um, hopefully uh, now, now what we're doing is kind of uh, programs um, I don't know, but if I can make a, a school type of thing, mm -hmm. not rigid uh, Mongusho type of school, <laughs> but something, the learning space. Yes. Um, I don't know what it is like yet, but uh, then I, I think I'm providing already part of it, but I'd like to kind of integrate things to offer learning space. Okay, so finally, could you please give a small message or maybe some kind of advice for uh, those who are thinking about going abroad or moving abroad? Right. My advice will be very general. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I think the attitude. If you're visiting or living in a new place, I think you have to be open to new things mm -hmm. rather than try to do things uh, as the way you, you have you knew already, yes. but try something new uh, and try how local people do. And if you're visiting, uh, try not to become a tourist mm -hmm. and then try to gain the perspectives of the residents, you know, as the way as, as you live. And then try to do things as you live and visit the same shops, visit that eat same things at the local uh, place. I think that um, sort of 
I don't know how to call it, builds up your experiences much wider and deeper than just scambling through the surface. And living in a, if you're moving to live, uh, that is a challenge, I think. Mm -hmm. But again, same thing, you know, be open and then try to meet with locals and try to learn from them first, mm -hmm. rather than try to s s s s like stick on your own way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.